I'll once again make my image more visual by darkening the transparency. If we select this one, this key, we're making it lighter. If we select this key, we're making our image darker. See how you can see that really well? We use our point to point key, no stitch line. Again, we're just creating a barrier around the areas that need to be stippled. We're creating that little wall that we can pour our stippling into. Now remember I said that my stippling ended right over here. I know that since I visually looked at it over there while we were rehooping. I'll make sure that I start right here in this area to the right of this seam all the way down. I'll pop a point in that upper left corner. And you can start wherever you want. I could have started over here if I would have liked to. I'll left clip my mouse and hold it and just stretch it down. See, this one's gonna be pretty easy on this side since I can go all the way down. Okay, so now I have a line from here to here. We need to go over to this area. That way we can begin popping our points around this little area of the shoe that we can see. Pop a point bring it over here and I might want to enlarge so I can see it better and then I can scroll down and scroll over see how we can see that much better oh it looks like I'm on top of my little shoe there doesn't it I'm gonna undo I'll need to zoom out and I want you to see these things it's a process Let's zoom in one little notch, 200. And go all the way to the edge and go all the way down. That way I can see now when I pop my point from here to here, that way I'm not too close or on top of my little shoe. When I go around a curve, I, I do that in smaller points that way I can allow the line to curve a little bit or go around the curve pretty easily. See, we have a pretty good shape there, right? All right, now let's just zoom out. And now I can go all the way over here in this right-hand bottom corner. I like to left click, pull the line and drag it. Habit of mine, left click and hold all the way up in this corner. Now I need to stop just before the edge of the little shoe. So we'll Click and drag. This will be another time that it's probably great if I enlarge. So let's enlarge. And then we can go up. Also have the pan feature. So if I select the hand, then I can just move. I can click and hold and move it down until I can see the area that I'm looking at. Now, if I do that, I lose my point to point key. So I need to reselect the point to point key. Let's click. See the line? Drag it and just place it around our little shoe. Take your time. I'll zoom out. There's where we popped our last little point. Now we need to connect from here to here. And that closes our line. I'll bring my opacity down so you can see the line. So notice here we have that outside line, our little curve up over that bottom part of our shoe, up along the side and around the top part of our shoe. Bring our opacity back up a little bit. Just wanted you to see that. Now we need to select our stipple. We'll select our fill key, then our stipple. Okay. We need to highlight our little fill cup and then touch in the center of the screen, just making sure that we're not touching on top of either one of our little shoes. There we go. See how our stippling is all the way around, but it did not apply to the little shoe areas or this side area. Select next. 
tight stippling, we'll change our spacing to 15 millimeters. You'll notice when I hold it, it goes fast, or you can just pop it in segments, whether you're touching the minus or the plus, you can just click and touch and click and touch, or you can hold and go fast. Now we'll select OK. Our spacing is adjusted. We'll set it and OK. Now we're over back to our embroidery screen. We'll select embroidery and let our embroidery machine quilt this section of our quilt. We've completed our second hooping, our quilting in our second hoop. I have a little thread here. I'll just trim that. It does knot it when it begins stitching and when it ends stitching. And I looked at my embroidery machine. It took seven minutes for this to stitch. Let's loosen our latch. Remove our center frame. And scoot our bottom frame towards us and continue that process of repositioning. Once again, I'm filling the base frame. I'm just using my hands as a centering option to approximately get it positioned before we put our center frame in. I'm going to check my notches to see if I have this section centered within the notches. I'm a little too far down, so I'm going to scoot my hoop this way. Now it's a little hard for you to see my inside notches at the angle that you're looking on. But here's my little mark that I made here and here, which represents that vertical measurement. Now let's take a moment to use my tape tip. So here is my mark that represents the width, like where it's going to start this away. I can see that I'm past my stippling. I like some of that stippling to show. So whenever I scan the next time, I can see some of that existing stippling that we just stitched. But let me show you my little taping tip. I'm just going to grab some washi tape. I'll tape it on top of the stippling. I want to tape it at the edge of the stippling. Here's where the stippling stops. So I'll back up and just place my tape at the edge of the stippling. Now, if you need to cut your tape, since your stippling will move around, it's not necessarily going to be in a line. You can do that. Okay, so I'm going to stop it about right there, tear it. Here's my stippling here. It goes down a little bit. It works its way in that direction a little more. 
I'm gonna grab just a little more piece. I have stippling that stops here. Now when we scan, we can really see this visual line and I'll use that for a reference point visually to pop my points in. Let's go back to our embroidery machine and place our frame on our embroidery machines. Now, once again, I want you to get comfortable knowing that you can adjust your opacity up here. We can see the image, but it's pretty faint. Let's make it a little darker. All right, so we can see it really good, right? Let's grab our point to point tool. We'll select our line property, point to point, no stitch line. Okay, and you can clearly see our washi tape that we placed along this edge. That will make it really, really easy for us to see where we need to pop our lines along this edge. If we look at our image this time, you'll see that we'll need to go around our rattle. We have a little area of an embroidery in this upper right hand corner and a little bit of an embroidery down in this lower right hand corner. First, I think I'll place my border, my little line around my rattle. I'll zoom in and just move it over. That way I can see it clearly. I might even enlarge it to 400%. That's really nice. I can see it really good. Now I'll start popping my points. Since I use my panning feature by selecting the little hand up here, I needed to also once again reselect my point to point tool. I really don't need to go inside this area. It's so small, the stippling won't go in that area anyways, even though I did it here. Just a little thought there. Keep in mind, I'm holding my mouse, my left click, whenever I'm stretching the line. If I just pop the point, it'll leave the point right where I've left clicked. Did I say right click? I meant left click. Click. <laughs> okay, now it closed my line. So we have a line around our rattle. Let's zoom out. And now let's start going all the way around. Let's pop us a point in that upper left-hand corner. You'll notice when I use my scrolling bars, I don't have to reselect my point-to-point -to -point tool. Here we have an embroidery design beginning. We're at the very bottom of the screen. I'll pop my point onto the screen and then stretch it just before I touch that part of the embroidery design.
Now we need to go all the way up here and I'm zoomed in so I'm not seeing the whole image but I know that I can stretch a straight line here and not run into something that I shouldn't. Now we can go all the way up in this corner and then outline this portion of our embroidery design. Oh, now look, this is our safety pin. I need to undo. I'm gonna make my view even darker. So the safety pin was embroidered in white here and I can barely see it. This would have been a really good time for me to place that washi tape in that area as well. I am gonna look closely and just wing it. I can see a little bit of the shadow there. So again, this would have been a great place for me to put that washi tape. And I wouldn't have to strain my eyes so much. All right, let's scoot over. And we can even zoom out at this point. And now we'll just connect over here where we started. All right. Let's grab our stipple. Select our fill cup and touch onto the screen, just making sure that we're not touching inside any of those areas that we closed up. Did y'all see what happened? I had my opacity all the way up. So whenever I applied the stipple, I didn't see it right away. So let's bring that opacity down. And you'll notice now we can see our stipple. That might happen to you. And you might wonder, well, what's going on here? Always remember you have that opacity feature up at the top and you may need to make it a little lighter or a little darker at times to work with what you are doing. Okay, that looks good. So let's select next. Let's adjust our spacing. Back to our 15. Select okay. Reset it. That looks good. Now we're on our embroidery. We'll select embroidery. And again, seven minutes it'll take to stitch this quilting motif. I'll also remove my washi tape. We have one more section to quilt here in the middle, and it's not a complete frame full. Open my latch, remove my inside frame, scoot it down. Now this is why I always like to have extra batting and backing. That way, when I get to a point in the quilting process, I still need some extra area. If I had it cut to right here, I wouldn't have enough to hoop. I just want to position it so I have enough to hoop over here at the edge of the frame this time. I'm approximately centering. And I've been keeping them in line this way, but if you get off a little bit, it's not a big deal. You notice how we've been going around our embroidery designs. If you're not exactly in line with the previous stippling height wise, then you just pop your points in a way that it goes around the existing stippling in that hooping. I think I've got it to where I have it positioned. Slip that frame in. The latch is still open. And this time we'll have a whole lot of our stippling in this hooping. And that's okay. Make sure my frame, my center frame is seated well within the base frame. Now this time I'm gonna outline my safety pin with some washi tape. That was a little bit hard for me to see. And this way I'll be able to see it really, really easy. This tape is not real sticky. That way it's not gonna hurt my fabric or my embroidery design. Here's my stippling. I'm going to stay safe and just place that washi tape, this edge of the washi tape, 
at the edge of the stippling. And you'll notice your stippling takes on its own little shape in different crevices and corners. Now you'll see over here in this area, our stippling is set to 15. There's no way with the pattern that I'm hitting here that I'll be able to quilt in this area. So I'll leave this open. And then when we move our frame down to the bottom, I'll quilt this area within that hooping. I'm not gonna worry about that right now. I'll just come around the embroidery design and all the way to the outer edges of the sashing around my little safety pin and to here. Now remember, like I said, never ever place your points past your sashings. If your embroidery foot goes up underneath here, you're gonna really have a hot mess. It's gonna be dangerous. We don't wanna do that. Since I can visually see this really, really clearly with the color of my fabric, I'll just make sure that I pop my points just inside the edge of the sashing. Once again, I'll bring you through the scanning and the process, placing our lines where they need to be. We've completed the full center quilting it. Let's remove it from the hoop. And now I can start quilting bottom section or the top section. It doesn't matter either way. I'll just bring it down. And I think I'll start up in that area. That looks like to me, we won't have as much to quilt, a little bit less. Before I hoop, I'll mark where the edge of my stippling is with my tape. Again, if you want to just look on your screen of your machine and see that image, you can do that. This is just a little extra thing that I like to do since it's really pronounced. I'll just estimate about where I need that to be. So I know I'll go around here. And here, if you'll notice, here's my marks. So the height of the quilting will quilt within this mark and this mark. I'll get all of this in really, really easily. And then my width will be from here to here. I'm going to look at this mark and this mark. Scoot y'all down. This is where I'm just going to give it a visual look here. I want to make sure 
that this edge is going to be within the embroidery field. I need to scoot that over. My height is perfect. I've got plenty of room for my height between these areas. So I can just evenly place the frame. I've got this extra, so that's great. I'll be hooping very easily as well. Now I need to move it out to make sure the edge of my sashing will fit within the field. Okay, that looks good. Yeah, I'm just gonna gauge off of this area first. Get my base frame back up underneath there. Let me check, make sure my backing is positioned correctly. It may feel like we're getting a little bit redundant. And I think after I quilt maybe one more hooping, that'll just all make sense to you. And then I might just let you fly. And then you continue yourself and I'll continue quilting the rest of this quilt. Okay, now that I've got that positioned, give it a look one more time. Just reposition. Now when we scan, I'll need to go around my rattle and then at all of these corners. I'll let you see the part of me popping my points, but I think you kind of seen plenty of the stippling process. Then I'll just come back and reposition our hoop. I've already scanned, so you see the scan on the screen. I'll make it a little brighter. Once again, anytime I use embroidery tape or any type of washi tape or painter's tape, I always remove it before I begin the stitching process. See how the quilting is really coming together? I'll continue this process until I've quilted my complete quilt. Let me remove this section from the frame. And you can just see how it's connecting together. But once we remove the frame, it's really hard to tell where one hooping began and the next one ended. It really allows your quilting to come together and blend. I think we've gone through enough of this process together. Like I said, I'll finish up my quilting. I'll continue all the way down this side until I've quilted all of the quilt and then I'll quilt my bottom section. That we have left over. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. If you have this feature built into your embroidery machine and you've not used it yet, this is a great feature that's within these machines. And I think that you really should try it at least once. And after you get comfortable with it, I'm pretty sure it's going to be one of your go-to options for quilting. Mm -hmm.